Michael, you're an atheist. Many of your best friends are atheists. You uh, debate with uh, people who believe in God. What are atheism's best arguments? The atheists who take a philosophical perspective use a different set of arguments than I would. You know, they, they have, has to do with the first cause and the prime mover, and they debunk all those. They sort of leave the theist arguments without any substance. Ergo, there is no God. The approach I take is more positive, actually, in, in the sense of there's actually positive arguments against the idea that there is a God, which is anthropological, psychological, sociological studies of religion. And so the fact that where you happen to be born tells us which God you believe in and which religion you adhere to. And the fact that there's 10,000 different religions around the world, at least, if not more, and thousands of different gods, that's indication, that's a strong indication that we created God, not vice versa. The counter argument is that all of those different religions have a core concept of a supernatural agent of some kind, and that culturally that that core concept is then expressed in different ways. And and the and the very diversity and ubiquity was across the earth and every society that you're using against God is can would be used as a proof that there is a God or, or some sort of a a, 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 a supernatural force that exists. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That is the argument that they make. And my counter to that is actually, no, we can look inside the brain and at evolutionary theory to explain why even that concept is constructed by humans and not vice versa. That is, we make gods and God did not make us. Because, for example, if you stimulate certain parts of the temporal lobe, people will experience floating out of their body. They'll experience a sense presence. There's an invisible being in the room with me right now. I can just sense him here. And, and you just poke around there and do uh, brain stimulation. You can do it with uh, uh, like electromagnetic fields. You can do it through sleep deprivation, through hunger and starvation. And, and so playing the role of a theist, I'd say, well, of course there's that. If, if, if God's going to have a relationship with people, there has to be a, a way that, that God can direct evolution so that people will have a way to communicate. Do we have, it's not a miracle that I see, I have to have eyes to see. So if I'm going to have a relationship with God, there has to be a part of my brain to do that. Good, good argument. And that is the argument that they make. So, and then I come back and say, okay, but if, if God did it that way, why is it that somebody born in India doesn't believe in your God at all? He believes in Ganesha, the blue elephant god. But why would why would God have done it that way? And had I been born there, that's what I would believe instead of a Western. So why is my brain different than the Indian's brain? And, and, and the the argument that some would make, uh, who are universalists, would say that both of those individuals are are in touch with the same uh, 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 supernatural force or 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 ultimate reality, or the real, and people have different characterizations yeah. of what that is. Um, and, and that so many people do that is a demonstration that there's some deep need. Right, exactly, a deep need that evolved, like all of our other needs. And you could just start with something like hunger, and thirst, and sex, I mean, really basic drives that obviously we evolved for, for very specific reasons for survival. But you just start building onto that all these other beliefs that, that are really no different. They're just emotions evolved to drive behavior to do certain things, including the emotion of wanting to be with other people, a social thing. Okay, so, so we have, the, the, this is a, an anthropological social argument, which you make. Uh, others uh, analytic would make analytical kinds of arguments to undermine the theist uh, argument. So those are two broad categories yeah. of atheistic arguments. Uh, are there others? Well, the problem of evil, okay. I think, is probably the biggest one uh, in terms of the way things are in the world mm -hmm. and the way things uh, should be if there were a God or not a God. Mm -hmm. And the way the world is structured with evil, you know, why bad things happen to good people. And I'm not talking about you know, why you hate me and, and why there's genocide. No, I mean, just like innocent children getting cancer. Why would that happen? Uh, in a universe where there's an all-powerful, all-good God, that shouldn't be happening. In a, in a universe where there is no God, that is exactly what would happen. So it fulfills that. It's sort of a prediction. Right. The argument from evil is a strong one because it, it leads directly 
without a lot of complicated arguments to the fact that the universe has no God. To explain it with a God, you have to go through some complex thinking. And, and theists have a lot of those. They do. And there are, are dozens of explanations for the problem of evil, but they're complicated. They take books. That's right. And I know. You had one statement that therefore there's no God. Right. That to go the other way. So, now, so that's three. Would you say those are the three core kind of approaches to for atheists? Are there any others? They are, well, the cosmological arguments that, that are still a little iffy because we don't know enough now. But the idea that universes can pop into existence out of nothing, out of the quantum foam fluctuations, because nothing is actually not nothing, but it's you know quantum physics and and so forth. At the Planck scale, nothing is actually teeming with energy and things pop right. in and out of existence. Right. Maybe that's where universes come from. Uh, or maybe there's multiple universes, the multiverse of various kinds. What, but what those really do is they just remove the need for a god. So that's really part of your first category, in a sense. It's, yes, it, that's right. It's analytical approaches from science or philosophy to undermine the uh, the, the the core thinking of religion, because each of those have counter arguments, as you right. well know. I'm just looking for these broad categories of how to understand atheists. So, so it's the it's the analytical arguments, whether they're scientific or philo philosophical, the anthropological, sociological, and then the problem of evil. But the difference here, the, just two, really. There's that. There's negative arguments that are just built around uh, countering the theist arguments okay. to leave them nothing to stand on. Mm -hmm. and, that, and therefore you just infer, okay, then there must be no God. Mm. My argument is, because uh, most of these uh, atheists start the debate going, look, I know I can't prove a negative. However, I can counter all of your arguments. I'm actually taking mm. a different approach. I'm saying, I actually can show you how... Mm. Humans and cultures construct gods and religions, and that's a positive evidence in favor of that we invented gods.